All right, we're going to get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. I hope you're all having a good day so far. The focus of this presentation is on ways to build recreational trails for walking, horse riding, and light vehicle use, as well as different methods for stabilizing embankments near trails. I'm your host, Corey Schneider, Business Development Manager with Presto Geosystems. I've been with Presto for 14 years, providing technical assistance and site support for our entire product line. We are located in Wisconsin and manufacture erosion control, stormwater management, and porous pavement products that are used all over the United States and the world. We sell through an experienced distribution network that can provide local assistance on all of your projects. I have everyone muted now, so if you have questions during the presentation, please type them in the question window and I will answer them at the end. Here are the things I hope you get out of today's presentation. Hope you can understand how to properly build trails to reduce the impact to the surroundings, how different trail uses can affect the design, how to build through wetlands or other environmentally sensitive areas, and which products are most applicable for unique conditions that may be encountered. We're also going to touch on wall and slope design to ensure that embankments along trails remain stable. First, a little background on Presto. We worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to develop geocell technology back in the late 70s and have been innovating ever since. Our products have been used in over 200 countries and in every state in the US. Uh, we do pride ourselves in going in, we pride ourselves in going beyond simply providing a product. Um, if you go to our website, which is prestogeo.com, you'll find a lot of design and construction resources that can easily be downloaded. We do have experienced engineers on staff. And what those engineers do is they are able to provide uh, free project evaluations for any project where you're potentially thinking about using one of our products. Uh, you simply go again to prestogeo.com and on the top near the middle you'll find a button that says request free project evaluation fill out a couple of short forms and then within a couple of business days we'll turn that around and recommend exactly which product you should use and if any anchorage is required and um, any other requirements for the project we do also provide contractor support and that will be either through our local distribution network or Presto will show up on site to make sure that the contractor is not only installing the product correctly, but also as efficiently as possible. Presto operates in three product areas. Uh, we have soil st stabilization using our GeoWeb GeoCells. And the geocells can be used for load support, slope and channel protection, building green and building green retaining walls. We also have a line of porous pavements. Uh, we have both vegetated and aggregate solutions, as well as lightweight reusable construction mats. Today we will cover some geoweb solutions, as well as our aggregate porous pavement product, and a little bit on our construction mats as well. An important thing to keep in mind as we go through this webinar, the trails that are made with our products are all considered permeable trails, assuming you use the proper infill. And that means that there will be no impermeable paved surface being placed. The final surface is going to be a stone or sand material. This lessens the environmental impact of the trail, reduces the amount of heavy equipment required for installation, often in difficult to reach locations, and improves the overall cost and speed of the project. We'll begin with what makes a good trail. The first aspect of the design is the reinforcement of the trail area. Especially when the trail moves through sensitive areas, keeping the path intact is how you keep people away from damaging vegetation or getting lost while wandering. The trail needs to be clearly delineated and needs to be reinforced enough to stay in place over time. 
using products specifically designed to act as the reinforcement of the soil or stone fill means the trail will last longer and will not encroach on the surrounding environment. The next key to a well-designed trail is drainage. Ponding water can ruin a trail surface and water that runs off the trail into unreinforced areas can scour and damage those areas. As I mentioned, all the products from Presto are considered permeable and it is pre precisely for this reason. By keeping the surface permeable, the water infiltrates at the point of contact right when it hits the trail. The water can then permeate down through the product and into the subgrade, entering the groundwater system. The water won't pond at the surface and it won't run off or collect outside the reinforced areas. This keeps the trail in the same condition no matter the weather, so there won't be any flaws or failures created below the surface that you can't see. The last thing to consider when designing a trail is how to confine the surface. Loose aggregate stone or sand is easily moved under shoes, hooves, tires, and water, leading to ruts, holes, and generally damaged trail areas. When the trail surface is damaged, people are going to want to move around the damage, leading them off the trail and into unprotected areas, potentially disturbing sensitive environments. Keeping the surface in place is an important feature of the products from Presto. When the stone or sand is properly held in place, ruts cannot form and the, the material can't be washed away. This greatly reduces the amount of maintenance required because the trail surfaces aren't degrading. The first product we'll look at is the GeoWeb three-dimensional soil confinement system. This is a geocell, which may be a term you have heard before. It is similar to a geogrid, but is three-dimensional so that it has depth to provide true confinement and can be used in a wider variety of applications. The GeoWeb con system consists of two main components, cell size and cell depth. The cells come in three sizes, approximately eight inches by 10 inches, 11 inches by 12 inches, and 18 by 20 inches. Each one of these cell sizes can come in three, four, six, eight, or 12 inch depth. The combination of cell size and depth depend on the product details and loading requirements, but generally trails will use a four or six inch depth and a small or medium sized cell. The seam strength is very important to the function of a geocell. The stronger the seam strength, the better design the geocell is. A strong seam allows for heavier infill material, steeper and taller slopes, and better lifetime performance. The strength of the panel material, in our case, high-density polyethylene, is also critical to the strength and performance of a geocell system. Here you can see a typical GeoWeb panel. It comes tri-folded and palletized. Each section has a nominal width of eight and a half feet with lengths up to 58 feet. Here you can see a typical panel size in the photo on the right here of eight and a half feet by 27 inches or 27 feet long. The panels are flexible, opening like an accordion, so they can follow the natural contours of the work site without being confined to a rigid set of dimensions. Here you can see our standard performance and material specification summary. As you can see, there is a lot of information packed into our standard spec sheet, which we won't go through line by line. I don't want to bore you too much, but I at least wanted to provide you with a sense of what a typical GeoCell product spec should look like. You'll note that it contains a lot of detail on key material properties, including weld strength and ESCR or environmental stress crack resistance. And just a general note, when reviewing product spec sheets for geocells and any geosynthetic product for that matter, for that matter, you will want to pay close attention to any disclaimer language a product provider tries to sneak into the fine print, usually at the bottom of the page. Recently we've noticed a concerning trend where low-end product providers prevent present performance data that appears to equal industry accepted standards on the surface, 
But then they add disclaimer language in the fine print at the bottom, stating that their specifications are subject to change without notice, or the information shown is for general purposes and not intended for design. Just a heads up to watch out for this type of trap, especially if you get hit with a request from a contractor on one of your projects to evaluate a substitute product. Our spec sheet contains no disclaimers and we stand behind our numbers so you can deliver certainty in the solution as you build with materials you can trust. The GeoWeb system is a three-dimensional cellular confinement system, meaning that the panels have individual cells that are filled with an in infill material that ultimately makes the final surface of the trail. By confining the infill material, the system distributes the loads and prevents rotting, and the cells keep the infill in place so that it doesn't wash away from stormwater runoff or move with traffic. The surface of the trail is going to be stable no matter what infill is chosen and require very minimal maintenance for the lifetime of the project. Let's look at some different options for building stable trails with the GeoWeb system. Walk, run, cycle trails are meant for people, small animals such as dogs and bicycles only. This type of trail is not meant for equestrian use. These are the most common type of trails and can go along shorelines, through urban areas, or through forests and parks. The flexibility of the GeoWeb panels allows for smooth, natural-looking curves. The panels can be held open with stakes, as shown here, but those stakes are generally not permanent. They can be removed once the panels are fully filled. The panels can be laid either along the length or width of the trail. They are easily field cut with a saw or landscape shears and are securely attached together. No matter the dimensions, there will be little waste as panels can be pieced together in nearly any configuration. This is the finished trail surface using a local granite aggregate and allowing vegetation on both sides. The trail is clearly delineated and meets up with existing paved trails in the distance. The GeoWeb panels will keep the trail in place and level, minimizing surface erosion and potential runoff of contaminants into the adjacent water. This path used granite, but any type of stone is going to be acceptable as an infill material, with the only limitations being it should be angular and have a maximum particle size of about one-third the cell depth. So you can use whatever is local to your area without needing to truck in expensive engineered aggregate. As I said, it is easy to field cut the GeoWeb panels to accommodate the trail dimensions, even rather narrow trails like this one between a road and protected wetlands. By having the GeoWeb panels create the trail, water runoff from the road won't wash dirt into the wetlands because the water will be able to infiltrate through the permeable GeoWeb surface, keeping the dirt surface in place, creating a nice jogging path. Paths through neighborhoods or urban areas can augment or replace traditional sidewalks in places where drainage is a concern. Replacing broken and ugly concrete sidewalks with gravel surface paths allows for flexibility in design and aesthetic and will improve the safety of the walkway for pedestrians. These types of trails are good for any typical sidewalk traffic, but can also be designed to support cars or trucks. A three or four man crew can install about 1,500 square feet of GeoWeb panels per hour, including laying a geotextile fabric and infilling the panels. The geotextile helps create a separation layer between the natural subgrade and the infill material, especially important in areas of very soft subgrade such as wet clay. The flexible nature of the GeoWeb panels allows it to conform to hills and dips in the paths and allows the system to be pitched to one side if needed. Because GeoWeb gives additional strength to the infill material through confinement, cross sections can be cut in half or more, reducing excavation, aggregate, and maintenance costs. 
We generally recommend overfilling the GeoWeb panels slightly when installing so that there is a wear surface over the panels and the plastic is not visible. This surface will become naturally compacted over time based on the trail usage. Having the panels slightly overfilled helps protect the GeoWeb material from vehicle tires or other potential damage. Equestrian trails are next and they have some different requirements than walking paths. Equestrian trails have to be hardy enough to stand up to horseshoes while remaining smooth enough to avoid damage to their hooves. Horseshoes can pick up a surprising amount of dirt with each step and with their heavy concentrated point loading can cause fast deterioration of the trail. If the trail is designed to withstand horse traffic, it is more than sufficient to handle hiking, biking, and small motorized vehicles. A GeoWeb trail system was utilized for erosion control for these equestrian trails. The gravel surface is resistant to rotting and the one inch stone size is easy for the horses, horses to walk over. This aggregate path will not get muddy or create sinkholes, so the surface will remain ready for use even after rain or heavy use. Having a well-defined path also helps prevent damage to areas off the trail and using the GeoWeb system allows for inclusion of natural markers, such as the large boulders we see here on both sides of the system. <clears throat> now we're going to walk through a case study for a shoreline trail in the city of the colony, Texas. This project was a multi-use trail along the shoreline of a lake. The trail will see pedestrians, bikes, small vehicles, and potentially equestrian traffic. The client, the city of the colony, wanted to follow the natural contours of the shoreline, which the flexible GeoWeb panels can easily achieve. There was concern about the potential for uplift under the system due to the very high water table and lake level fluctuations. So additional steps were taken to prevent this from occurring. A series of polyester tendons were run through the GeoWeb panels and were anchored multiple times per panel. The tendons in conjunction with the final infill stone material prevent the GeoWeb system from lifting and deforming due to groundwater pressures. This is a good practice in wet environments with potentially saturated soils. A well-graded decomposed granite was chosen as the infill material as it was readily available in the area. Using local materials is encouraged, though any type of stone is acceptable, as long as it is angular and allows good drainage. This means that you are going to want stone with limited fines so that water can percolate through. If the water can't infiltrate, you will get ponding at the surface, similar to a paved surface such as asphalt. So you want to make sure your infill material avoids this problem. And you should keep in mind that this material is going to be your final surface, so aesthetics may be a factor in choosing the material. That being said, you certainly can infill with um, one certain type of material and then use a different type of material for the wearing surface if you don't particularly care for the aesthetics of the majority of the fill which may be less expensive. Once the GeoWeb panels were installed, the infill was placed with a standard front end loader and then raked by hand to ensure all the cells were fully filled. The material should be placed on the outside of the panels as needed to match the final grade and meet up with the unexcavated areas. For ease of construction, you can drive your vehicles and equipment on the GeoWeb panels as soon as they are filled, right up to the limits of the filled area if necessary, so you don't have to wait for the entire system to be filled before using it. This can help minimize the impact of construction on the area since you won't need to create access lanes or clear out excess vegetation on the sides. A small smooth barreled roller compactor finishes off the job. 
this is where having the wearing surface of overfilled material mentioned earlier comes into play. The compactor isn't driving directly on the GeoWeb panels and you can e easily visually confirm that no cell is underfilled. Again, the stone infill should have minimal fines, less than 10% is ideal. Avoiding fines in your stone allows the system to stay permeable and not get clogged. Trails built with the GeoWeb system are a great example of green infrastructure by not disrupting the water cycle or impacting the groundwater flow. No additional stormwater infrastructure is needed when the trail surface is permeable, so there is minimal impact on the environment around the trail. <clears throat> Here we can see the nice clean trail created by using GeoWeb, allowing for most uses without having to worry about needing constant maintenance. The path is clearly delineated while maintaining a natural look that people won't mind seeing in their backyards. A few months after installation, there was a large rainfall event, over seven inches in a three hour period, which can be incredibly damaging both during and after the storm. Several portions of the trail were flooded to the point of standing water at the surface on and around the GeoWeb protected areas. But thanks to the GeoWeb system and the extra precautions such as the tendon system, the trail was not washed away as you might expect from an unprotected gravel trail. The trail is still usable, allowing maintenance workers access to the damaged areas for inspection and repair. No repair was needed to the GeoWeb system, and once the water was able to infiltrate, the trail was as good as new. When there is such a large rainfall event, the ground becomes saturated and doesn't allow water to infiltrate, giving it no choice but to stay at the surface and become sheet runoff. The GeoWeb system protects the trail surface against erosion when this happens, with the cell walls functioning as a series of check dams keeping the infill confined within the individual cells. Then when it is able, the water can infiltrate into the ground and the trail is still in good shape. On to the next case study. In the spring of 2018, several storms violently swept through areas along Southern Maine's coastline devastating the beaches and trails of Fort Foster, a town-owned park in Maine. As you can see from these photos, the trails and maintenance roads were washed out. To reconstruct the washed out recreational trail and maintenance road, six inch depth GeoWeb panels were installed at the site and infilled with one inch crushed aggregate. There were sections of trail that slope down to the beach areas. To stabilize the two to one sloped areas down to the beaches, four inch depth GeoWeb sections were secured to the face of the slope using a dead man tendon and atra tendon clip system. Then the GeoWeb was filled with aggregate and covered with large riprap. By using the GeoWeb system, the park was able to armor the maintenance road, recreational trail, and slopes from future storm events. Here's a before and after photo of one of the trail areas. And here we have a photo of one of the finished shoreline trails a few months after completion. Since its original installation in 2018, the GeoWeb load support and shoreline protection system continues to perform as designed, allowing the community, community to once again enjoy the trail system and local beaches. One of the biggest questions we get is about cost, which doesn't really surprise anyone. Especially if this is a new technology for you or your area, having an idea of how much the GeoWeb system costs compared with other stabilization techniques is very important. So here we have a basic comparison for the GeoWeb system for a load support application, in this case a gravel surface road. This comparison shows the difference in both price and cross-section depth for an aggregate-only unreinforced section 
a section using geogrids and geotextiles, and then two sections showing the use of the GeoWeb system, one with aggregate and one with salvaged on-site materials as the infill. You can see the GeoWeb system is both thinner and less expensive than the other methods, significantly so when on-site material is utilized. In fact, you have a 40% a savings can be realized compared to the GeoGrid geotextile section, which does, which does not allow for the use of most salvaged or on-site materials as high friction angle, well-graded material is required with the use of grids and textiles. Of course, your aggregate costs and distance to quarries may vary, but this will give you a general idea of the savings that can be achieved and we're more than happy to uh, work out cost comparisons of different sections if uh, you provide us with some local costs for um, both aggregate and excavation. Now, moving away from the GeoWeb system, this next option illustrates similar confinement of infill, but within a rigid paver structure known as GeoPave. Unlike the GeoWeb material, which is typically three or four inches deep for trails, GeoPave units are two inch deep and made from recycled high density polya. The GeoPave units have these rigid paver characteristics with spe specific features needed for performance with aggregate infill. The main one I want to highlight though is the monolithic mesh bottom. This is a molded in place mesh on the underside of the paver unit. And the mesh will keep the stone infill from migrating under the unit. And the integrated nature assists in the overall rigidity of the paver unit. The lattice bottom spreads the load similar to a snowshoe, so the wheel loads do not create ruts. Geopave units are locked together with a connection device to create a fully integrated contiguous pavement that is highly resistant to traffic stresses. Geopave was designed using a finite element analysis and will not lift up over time as seen with other systems. And as I mentioned, the Geopave unit is only two inches deep, which can be a real asset if the project requires a thin cross section due to buried utilities or high excavation costs. We'll now look at a few project examples. This project is an access trail for walking down to a swimming area on a lake. The walkway had to be ADA compliant so that everyone could use it. It was also important that the trail help reduce runoff into the lake so the permeable nature of the geopave system was critical. You can see the eroded trail before stabilization, both the trail surface and the surrounding areas, and the new trail area on the right stabilized with geopave. The protected system will help prevent erosion from stormwater runoff and be a smoother surface for walking on for the visitors. Here's another trail in a wetlands area. Here, the geopave units were placed directly on the subgrade, but a geotextile separator fabric and a base layer of aggregate underneath the panels can be incorporated to support heavier loads or add additional detention. No matter the section, the entire system creates a flat, stable surface and supports the anticipated loads. The same principles that we discussed with the GeoWeb system apply here as well. By using an open graded aggregate stone with minimal fines content, the water can infiltrate at the point of contact, reducing surface runoff, and the individual cells can find the aggregate, preventing rutting and washout of the stone for a stable walking surface. A major concern here was protecting sensitive tree roots from impact damage. The geopave units are a great way to provide tree root protection by creating a bridge over the roots. So there is no direct contact from vehicle or pedestrian loads that could harm the trees. This bridge lasts the lifetime of the geopave trail and allows the trees to grow unimpeded. 
One of the great things about building trails with the GeoWeb or GeoPave system is the amount of choice you have over the final look of the trail. Two rock colors were chosen at this site to delineate the parking from the walkways. A light colored crushed limestone was used for the parking areas and a contrasting reddish brown buckshot crushed aggregate for the walkways. Additional de delineation such as concrete parking stops or snap delineators, which are the little yellow units you see in the geopave on the right hand side, can also be included to help create a sense of separation within the overall geopave system. This project ultimately earned lead gold for all of the low impact structure and landscape elements. Protecting the local watershed was the primary reason for the inclusion of permeable parking and walkways utilizing the GeoPave system. The pavements also perform as natural on-site stormwater detention, storing water in the base for natural percolation without the need for a large isolated detention pond, which would have been an unattractive nuisance on site. Geopave units come in 20 by 40 inch panels covering about 5.4 square feet, but they can easily be field cut or staggered to accommodate curves so you are not locked into a linear path. The system was a great choice for this project with a quick and easy installation, the ability to allow water to flow through the system and not run off into the pond, and providing a smooth, clean surface for walking. The standard geopave units are black, but a tan geopave is an option that allows natural blending with light colored stone. Again, the options available for the final design of the trail are, are what make using this system so versatile and a great choice for any project. The last option for trail services is the GeoTerra system, which are construction mats that are strong yet lightweight and don't require any fill. Because no fill is required, they are perfect for areas where infill, infill resources are scarce. Because there's no fill material, GeoTerra trails won't kill the existing vegetation they are placed over. They are open on the top and bottom and allow for vegetation to grow through them for as long as they are in place, which is essential for minimizing environmental impacts for pathways. GeoTerra units cover approximately five square feet each and can be connected to cover a larger area as needed. The mats are strong enough to support heavy vehicle and construction traffic loads and have enough flexural strength to bridge soft soils without warping or cracking. Geoterra units are connected with strong metal connectors to essentially form a floating road through wetlands with very soft soils. The connected mat system distributes loading across the pavement, minimizing potential for rutting or sinking in soft, muddy soils. In some areas of Alaska, hundreds of miles of ATV trails cut across wetlands and stream beds, causing extensive damage to natural preserves. ATV riders can cause the loss of vegetative cover and habitat values. Geoterra mats offer a great solution for low impact access in these wet and environmentally sensitive areas. The preferred method is to place the units across the entire trail width but in some cases, just in the wheel paths is acceptable. As planned, indigenous grasses regenerated through the permeable open cell geoterra mats, ultimately semi-camouflaging the product with the natural environment and protecting the vegetation from damage. In this case, the system ultimately ended up as a permanent structure and the geoterra mats will be, be able to last for as long as needed. The last section is going to pivot from the flat surface of the trail to the embankments that may be alongside or near the trail. Green walls can help create the space for trails to run through and work with permeable trails to allow water flow and promote vegetation. <clears throat> 
The same GeoWeb GeoCell technology that creates the trail surface can also be adapted to create retaining walls, such as this vegetated levee. The GeoWeb panels are stacked vertically on top of one another to create the wall, allowing for more horizontal space for the trail to be placed. The primary benefit of the GeoWeb wall is to create a stable, natural, living structure with vegetation for aesthetic appeal. The open front fascia allows rainwater to infiltrate. The wall structure can also absorb some runoff from the top of the wall, such as from walking trails. While vegetated walls are most common, aggregate filled walls are also possible. Using the same open graded stone we have been talking about, water can infiltrate through the wall so there isn't runoff onto your road or trail. An aggregate wall may be useful when you don't want to worry about maintaining vegetation in an area, such as an emergency response space, or in areas where vegetation is difficult to establish. The walls are designed as either gravity or reinforced walls in the same way as mechanically stabilized earth or MSE wall systems. An advantage they have over MSE block walls is flexibility in poor soil conditions. Their relatively lightweight and flexible nature allows them to tolerate reasonable differential settlement very well. Another advantage over traditional walls such as gabion baskets is the relatively shallow embedment depth of the wall and the ability to create a very steep wall face as steep as 80 degrees. Walls can be built in channels with limited space, such as through neighborhoods, without the need for heavy unloading delivery vehicles. The steep side slopes of the channel mean that the horizontal footprint is much smaller than if the side slopes needed to be shallower. The small required construction footprint is well received by residents of neighborhood projects. It is always necessary to consider live and dead loads that the wall will experience, especially when placed near trails or roads. Dead loads can be buildings or soil slopes above the wall, while live loads are for construction traffic and long-term vehicle traffic. When possible, the load should be placed away from the edge of the wall or fascia. If not possible, the design will need to be robust enough to support and withstand the live and dead loads. Having traffic barriers at the top of the wall, such as this wooden fence, will help keep the loads away from the GeoWeb system, which can help with the design. We'll now look at a vegetated retaining wall case study. This project was faced with having to retain soils in a very problematic soft soil area, but piling systems were expensive and they wanted to maintain the natural environment. Concrete and modular block walls were considered, but ultimately they chose the vegetated geocell wall for its natural aesthetics and lower cost. Here you can see the wall structure is constructed with a slight setback to allow for topsoil fill and vegetation. The backfill material is a good drainable aggregate. The wall can be seeded either by mixing the seeds in the soil before installation, by hydro seeding, or by broadcasting once installation is complete. As mentioned, the system's inherent ability to withstand some differential settlement in soft soil environments was extremely important at this site. The wall had varying heights along its length, which was also easily accommodated by the geocell system. By using the geocell wall, they didn't have to bring in invasive equipment such as augers or H piles, speeding the installation process. Here's the completely vegetated wall. The horizontal terraces allow rainwater collection, helping to minimize runoff and erosion. Pretty much any type of grass or flowering vegetation will survive on these walls, so by using local vegetation, upkeep can be kept to a minimum. Presto offers a free software for designing GeoWeb retaining walls and slopes. It's available on our website, again, prestogeo.com. 
and can be used by engineers and designers to determine if the GeoWeb system is appropriate for your project. There are a lot of resources on the website and how to use on how to use and interpret the software, but we're always happy to help with questions or recommendations. So far, we have looked at trail surface construction and vegetated retaining walls. GeoWeb can also be used for erosion protection in a surficial manner. This is a good way to protect slopes against erosion when the slope is shallower than what would be required for a retaining wall and globally stable. Generally speaking, 60 degrees or shallower will be suitable for the slope protection. If there are questions about this type of application, we are happy to talk you through it. <clears throat> there are three main infill types for slopes, depending on the type of protection needed. Topsoil, aggregates and granular materials, as well as concrete. We'll focus on topsoil and vegetation infill, as that is typically what is selected in trail applications to keep things looking as natural as possible. Here's a simplified diagram showing how the different system components interact with the GeoWeb to form a complete system. We'll talk about each of these components next. To begin, we have our slope with some standard dimensions. The first thing to go down is the geosynthetic layer, which can be a geotextile, geomembrane, geogrid, or similar product. These aren't always required, and we typically try to stay away from them in vegetated applications, but we can make recommendations based on project details. Then the GeoWeb is put in place. Note how the GeoWeb has a horizontal turn near the top of the slope. This is important for crest anchorage and erosion control. We have two options for anchoring. One is using stakes or anchors. These are placed mid-slope and at the crest with the number and spacing of stakes depending on slope length and slope angle. The other option is to use tendons and a dead man with the dead man being a buried pipe, concrete anchor, or earth or rock anchors at the crest. The GeoWeb is then filled with the desired infill material and if vegetated, an erosion control blanket or hydroseeding is used until vegetation is established. The Atra key is the first component for a completely integrated system, connecting each individual panel of GeoWeb into a single web that covers the slope. It allows for faster installation, and will last the lifetime of the project, ensuring that the slope is protected and that the GeoWeb system will not fail under anticipated loads. The specific engineering values of the Atra key will ensure the system holds up to loading over time without the corrosion seen in staples or the failure of underperforming cable tie systems. As slope angle increases, the driving force of the infill material exceeds the available frictional resisting force and additional anchorage is required. The ATRA anchors, which are ATRA clips on top of a number four or half inch diameter rebar, hold the GeoWeb to the slope and penetrate into the ground. If corrosion resistance is required due to project conditions, Presto has an HDPE Atra speed stake that is designed to work with the GeoWeb. For long steep slopes, slopes where the native soil is highly erodible or over a surface that cannot be punctured, such as a liner, tendons can be used. The Atra tendon clip transfers the load from heavy infill material to the tendons and crest anchorage system. Only the Atra tendon clip is specifically designed to fully transfer safely and securely the forces placed upon the geocell. Every accessory and every feature has been designed and tested to specifically work together so that we go from problem to design to construction solution with a system where the modeling replicates the real world forces. Now we'll take a very quick look at a couple of slope protection projects associated with trails. 
The American Tobacco Trail is a 20 mile rails to trails project running from Durham County to Chatham County in North Carolina. This slope had to be reconstructed after it was excavated in conjunction with the replacement of a culvert. After the culvert was replaced, the slope was regraded to its original 1.3 to 1 slope and it needed to be revegetated. The GeoWeb slope protection system proved to be the perfect solution. Another great example of using GeoWeb for slope protection is here on the trail at the uh, Lance Armstrong Bikeway in downtown Austin. Um, there's a bridge abutment um, coming up very close to the right side of this project, so they use some hard surface slope protection there. Uh, once we got to a nice sunny area, they transitioned to a topsoil filled geoweb and planted uh, native plants into it. In summary, Presto Geosystems offers GeoWeb, GeoPave, and GeoTerra that can meet any trail design needs, as well as GeoWeb for earth retention and slope protection near trails. Each product is designed to protect the surrounding environment while offering a low maintenance surface that won't wash away during heavy rain events. We offer a complete solution, including connections and anchoring options. Part of our complete solution is our technical assistance. As I mentioned earlier, we provide free project design evaluations. Simply fill out the form on our website with as much information as you have, including attaching documents such as geotechnical reports. And then once we receive it, uh, within three business days, but usually faster, we provide a complete design evaluation, including infill recommendations and anchorage requirements. We will work with you to get you the best design for your project. We've now made it faster and easier for you to obtain your PDH certificates. With our webinar dashboard, you can easily view our library of webinars and download PDH certificates for on-demand webinars completed. Your webinar dashboard, dashboard will keep a record of on-demand webinars along with PDHs earned. Please note that certificates for live webinars are managed separately from the on-demand webinar dashboard. So you won't find your certificate from today in there, but you will receive an email from GoToWebinar within the next two hours containing a download link to obtain your PDH certificate. In two or three days, you will also receive a separate email from Presto with more information about accessing the on-demand webinar dashboard with other helpful resources. If you do not receive either of the previously mentioned emails, please check your spam folder. Here's my contact information. I want to thank you for attending and remind you that you can send questions to us anytime at info at prestogeo.com or directly to me at the email listed here. Go to prestogeo.com for a wealth of information and don't forget to view our YouTube videos found by clicking on the YouTube icon in the upper right hand corner of our web page. I'll answer questions next, but if you have questions I don't get to or if you think of a question later, you can respond to the follow up email and we will be happy to answer your questions and help with any project recommendations. Let's take a look at what we have for questions today. First question is, is this LACES approved? And I honestly don't know what LACES is, so it's highly doubtful that it's been approved. You mentioned that the trails are permeable. New York State DEC defines gravel surfaces as impermeable. Is this system different for some reason? Um, well, unfortunately, they're usually going by state by state basis. There are some states that absolutely do not distinguish, distinguish between gravel and clean crushed rock. They are clearly separate materials with clean crushed rock being permeable 
but gravel or road base being impermeable once it's compacted. Um, so I don't know that this would be counted as different, but it clearly is. And if you have any contacts with DEC that you would like me to reach out to, feel free to send them my way and I'll see what I can do. Is the GeoWeb material recyclable? Yes, it is. It is not recycled, but it is recyclable. How do you assure sound compaction of granular material? It's actually quite easy to get compaction with the small cells that we have. So as I mentioned in the uh, presentation, we recommend that you overfill the material about two inches and then put a smooth roller barrel compactor over the top and you'll quite easily achieve compaction. With HDPE, do you have any problems with heat cold changes in dimensions? Um, not with the GeoWeb material because it is so flexible. Um, GeoPave also does not have any problems with that because we did a um, significant amount of testing and the way the product is designed with that um, attached mesh bottom as well as the way that it alternates between triangles and squares. We don't have any long beams running all the way across the unit, so it generally tends to expand and contract on itself rather than having the whole unit get bigger and smaller. Do you have problems with tree root causing growth causing heave like you get with concrete sidewalks? Um, well, tree roots are certainly going to win no matter what. Um, it's much less of a problem with the geo web because it's so flexible. So the whole thing might heave a little bit, but it's obviously not going to get damaged or cause tripping hazards. And with the geo pave, we typically have clean stone below it. So that creates some extra room to accommodate uh, the tree roots. But yeah, I mean, they're certainly something that need to be taken into consideration anytime you're building pretty much anything right next to a tree. Maximum recommended slope that you can install GeoWeb. Um, probably put this in before the slope protection part, but yeah, we can go up to 60 degrees. So whatever slope your trail is, is certainly not going to be a problem. Is your product suitable for use on trails that have significant root growth? We went over that already. Are there specific compaction requirements for the various trail types? Um, no, I mean, you just want to put that roller compactor on there, make sure that everything's all locked up within the cells. It doesn't really matter which type of trail it is. Any thought on developing a flexible centerline GeoWeb system so a crown can be incorporated into the cross section to enhance water runoff? Well, again, generally the idea with our products is there is no water runoff because it's a permeable system. But if you want to crown the trail, all you'd have to do is. Um, grade the subgrade with a crown and then you just have to make sure that you anchored the geoweb at the crown and on both ends it will conform to whatever the subgrade is like so as long as we anchor it and hold it in place it'll be fine is there any data or case studies available for product performance in freezing climates um, person who asked that, you are more than free to send me an email. I mean, we don't have any data, but I do have case studies that I'd be happy to send along. How does the GeoWeb perform inside a floodplain? We kind of went over that. As long as we are using the tendon system, that's going to make sure the whole system gets held down and stays in place. Can it support a fire truck? Uh, yes, we typically have to bump it up to a six inch depth, but uh, very easily can support HS25 loading. 
with winter maintenance, I would imagine the snow will melt to some degree, but if the snow accumulates, can the owner plow without damaging it? Um, we do recommend if you are going to plow these areas that you either use a rubber bladed plow, use uh, plow boots, which go on the ends of the plow and keep the plow an inch or two off of the um, product or have the plow driver just make sure he keeps the blade up, which is probably a bad idea. But yeah, we recommend certainly rubber bladed plow or plow boots and then plowing is no problem. Can it be used for playground ADA access? Um, yeah, certainly like the geo pave and geo, you know, it looks like geo Terra she was asking about. Well, yeah, you could make it ADA compliant, but I don't know that you'd want the GeoTerra in a playground. It doesn't sound like a good idea. The holes are about three inch squares as well. So especially with kids running on it, they could very easily get their little feet stuck in the holes and trip. Does open mat design create problems for running deer or other wildlife? Um, you know, I honestly don't know. We have uh, maybe a hundred miles of these installed up in Alaska, and I've never heard that being an issue. And projects all over the continental U.S. haven't heard it as an issue, but I can't say 100% that it is not. Uh, yes, GeoTerra can be used as track out control at a construction site. Life expectancy of the GeoWeb cells is well over 100 years. It's HDPE, which does not really break down at all. Do we have examples of use in major bike trails? No, we do not. Do we have solution? Do any of the solutions degrade with UV exposure? No, they're all UV stabilized. Will vegetation impact the long-term integrity of the system? I assume we're talking about walls here. Will roots cause damage? No, we have walls that have been up for 40 years and it's not a problem at all. What is the replacement rate for green walls such as collapse and replacement? Um, collapse replacement rate is zero. Been here for 15 years next month and I've there's none of our walls have ever collapsed. We have had some damage to front faces occasionally. People drive into them. We've had some fires that might melt a little bit of the front face and that front face can easily be replaced. If used in concrete, can it replace rebar? Yes, whenever we do a concrete filled geoweb, no other forms or reinforcement are required. Maximum longitudinal slope for trails using GeoWeb. It's unlimited. Whatever you think is going to make a safe trail is not going to be a problem for a GeoWeb. Any case studies of infilling GeoWeb with recycled asphalt millings? Um, it has been done, but I do not believe we have any case studies. For GeoWeb soil confinement, does the soil need to be compacted prior to installation? Um, no, I mean, if we're building trails, we want to avoid compacting the subgrade because we want to maintain as much um, infiltration as possible. And if you're talking about on slopes, no, we don't really want to compact that material because that will make vegetation more difficult to grow. Couple more snow plowing ones, which we've covered. Would you recommend, what would you recommend for reinforcement for corners on gravel ATV trails? Um, probably for corners, I would either use the empty GeoTerra or the aggregate filled GeoPave and make sure that they were anchored adequately.
Can this product be used on emergency spillways on small dirt dams? It sure can. Check out maybe our uh, channel webinars, which I'm sure we have one coming up soon. Design life for the permeable system. Again, it's HDPE, so well over 100 years. How do you clean the system over time? Um, you could put a light vacuum on it, or um, worst case scenario, you could suck out all the gravel, wash it, and put it back in. Got a question here about a trail near a river that typically overflows. Is there a recommended stone size that won't wash away? Um, it's going to really 100% depend on what the flow is uh, when that river overflows. We'd be happy to take a look at it if you would like to fill out a project evaluation, but without knowing um, unit discharge, velocity, et cetera, I can't really say. Are your products easily available in the tri-state, New York tri-state area? Yes, we have many distributors up in that area. What if you want to use it as trailhead parking lot, but you have a clay sub base? Do you recommend aggregate or with under drains? Um, yes. You have a place, if your subgrade is not going to drain, you obviously have to do something about that. So you're either gonna have to have a very extreme depth of base or some base mixed in with some under drains to get the water out of there. We investigated using recycled HDPE for using our GeoWeb. We have, and due to the variable nature of recycled materials, you cannot get a strong, consistent ultrasonic weld. Therefore, we are not interested in using them. But we do use recycled materials for our porous pavement systems as well as for the GeoWeb. How does the subdrain function in the green wall system? Um, is it redundancy? Well, it really depends. I mean, if you put clean stone in the entire reinforced zone in the back cells of the GeoWeb and you know a drainable topsoil in the front, then subdrains would be redundant. But if there's any part of that system that is not free draining, then you may cons may need to consider adding some sub drains. And then we also have uh, runoff coefficients for GeoWeb stone infill. A uh, little bit tricky because uh, all stone is not made the same, and it all doesn't drain the same. So. Your runoff coefficient is really going to be dependent on the type and permeability of the infill that you use, much more so than it will have any, or than the geo web or geo pave is going to affect it. All right, looks like that's all the questions, and it is uh, five minutes past. So, hope everyone found this to be beneficial. And again, feel free to call or email with any more specific questions. Thanks and have a good rest of your day.